All right, what is up, everybody? So uh, a couple things happened recently, really made me want to make a video on how to do free to play in Warframe, still get everything you need, and basically 99% of the things that someone who invests money can get in the game. Um, so one, you know, Destiny has been going through some rough times. I've seen a lot of Destiny players coming over, like, you know, new player posts on the, the Warframe subreddit. And I also feel like I see posts like, you know, almost daily at this point of people getting scammed on the trade market. Um, and that's just a real shame because Warframe has, in my opinion, the best monetization system and probably one of the best free to play systems in any game. Um, so it's a shame when people take advantage of new players and I'm trying to prevent that from happening. So first thing first, the two best resources in Warframe are not in the game. Okay, so I want you to go to warframe.market. This is not affiliated with DE, but if you've ever played like World of Warcraft or whatever, some kind of MMO, this is basically the auction house of Warframe. Um, and I'll go over how to use this. The other thing is the Warframe wiki. So the wiki has every ounce of information that is you know is in warframe which is immense so um do not use trade chat just don't if you're a new player you're not going to know how much something is worth and you're probably going to get scammed people are going to buy your ribbons for you know pennies on the dollar or they're going to make you pay like 50 platinum for a Warframe augment mod that should go for 10, stuff like that. So it's extra, it couldn't be more easy to use Warframe.market. Let's say you're trying to get Volt Prime, right? So you type in Volt Prime, here's all of his parts. You can go to the entire set. Now you wanna be a little savvy cause it's like, oh, the whole set is 94. But if you look at each individual piece, you got 14, you know, around 20. So we're at like 33, um, 73 and 87 or 86 rather. So, you know, if you bought all the pieces individually, it would be a little cheaper, but it would be, um, you know, slightly more annoying because you have to do multiple trades now if you're a newer player you're going to be lower mastery rank level and number of trades can be kind of important for low mr players because uh, as your mr increases the number of trades you can do every day also increases so that is one thing to keep in mind so if you want to buy something from this person, let's say you want to buy this Vault Prime set or Volt Prime set, you would just click buy, copy this text that they give you, go into the game and just paste that in, right? And send it. And I'm not going to send it because I already have Volt Prime, but it's that easy. You know, don't, don't try to scam the person. Don't change the price. That's scummy. You know, just click on buy, copy the text, paste it into the Warframe chat, boom, you know, easy as pie. Now, one thing to keep in mind for newer players who might not know, items have a trading credit tax in Warframe. So when you trade, let's say, Volt Prime Chassis Blueprint, you need to have 2,000 credits that the game is just going to consume as a tax. This isn't super relevant for prime parts, but for primed mods, it is extremely important because there is a huge trading tax on primed mods. And there is also a, I'm pretty sure, let me just, I'm not 100% sure what the trade, yeah, okay, there's a huge trade tax on legendary arcanes too. So basically like the rarer the item, the higher the trade tax is going to be. So I've gone to trade with a newer person and they had farmed the plat to buy something, but they hadn't farmed the credits to be able to trade for it. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, selling on Warframe.market is like crazy. I mean, I probably have a, a lot. Of, oh no, I actually, I did delete all my stuff. 
Um, so if you want to sell something, it's like super simple. Like let's say you have, you know, oh, I have um, Gauss Prime. I have a Gauss Prime set. I would just go to here, um, look at, or sorry, um, you know, place an order, just click want to sell. You could also do want to buy. I don't really think using want to buy is very useful to be honest. Do want to sell, you know, look at what like the going price is, price yours accordingly. And you can trade with players either, and I'll show this in game really quick. So you, so you want to join a clan. So that's one thing. So you want to join a clan to be able to leverage Warframe.market. So if you go to a clan, and so if you're trading with someone, usually they will take you to their clan. So they'll invite you to a party, and then they'll take you to their clan's dojo. Um, do, do, do. So if you so this is a neat feature they just added. If you hit Q, so if you're on PC, sorry, I don't remember what this says on console. Um, so if you're on PC and you hit Q, you can just go right to the trading post. Okay, and then you'll see a list of players here who are available to trade. If you're trading with someone on market, their name should be on here. As this says, very important thing, you need to be mastery two or higher, mastery rank two or higher, and have two-factor authentication enabled on your account. So you need to have both of those things to be able to trade. So that is kind of like the very quick tutorial on using Warframe.market. Um, the wiki, obviously, you know, that's, that's like a wiki. You can kind of search whatever on there. Um, but if, if you don't, if you stop watching the video now, you don't watch anything else, use Warframe.market, don't use Trade Chat, and use the wiki to look stuff up. Now, another... Um, misconception which i think they've tried to change things in the market a little bit to clear this up but like i know some people who start warframe you know oh, this is kind of awkward because i have most things oh i don't have this item okay so one of the few things i don't have in the game so you'd go to click on argo and vel and say oh man platinum is the premium currency this game sucks you can only buy items with plat this game is pay to win i i've heard a lot of people say this this isn't just like conjecture but if you just mouse over Blueprint, it will tell you where to farm the item. So it says you can use Pathos Clamps in Duviri, right? Now that's not going to make any sense to a new player. What the hell are Pathos Clamps in Duviri? However, it at least gives you a nugget to start looking into how to get that item. And that's actually how I kind of how I would encourage new players to, because like one thing is like, what do you do in the game, right? And the, the thing that people say is, usually say is go do the star chart, right? Go do the quests in the game. And that's a great starting point. But after you get done with the quest, like there is a, there's a lot of items in Warframe. Um, and I don't have all of them, but pretty, pretty darn close. So, you know, there's a lot of items in Warframe. There are like 740 things you can farm. And honestly, when I was a new player, I just like went through this and was like, oh man, you know, oh, this, this didn't exist when I started, but it's like, oh man, dude, these Octagara Prime pistols look really cool. I want to farm these. How do I farm these? Or whatever, you know, go like, oh, this Bosmu gun, that looks weird. That looks pretty cool. How do I farm that? So you would just go, okay, um, so let's say, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something you can buy with credits. So let's say you go to like weapons, primary weapons. So let's say you go to the hack, right? Oh, whoopsies. I'm showing things that I have owned. Okay, so let's say you click on the hack. You can either purchase it with plat or you can buy the blueprint. And this one, you just craft with normal, uh, you know, normal materials. So Neurode, Circuit, Salvage, Rubido. Now you might need to, now it's been a while. Um, I believe this, does the star chart show you what items can drop on a given planet? Uh, I think if you go to resource drones, yeah, okay. So if you, so instead of the night wave status, if you click on resource drones, when you go to a planet, this will kind of tell you, give you an idea of the resources you can farm there. 
Um, okay, well, not for this, but for most of them. Otherwise, you know, when you go to the market, you look up an item, you know, we'll use the hack as an example again. Um, look at the blueprint. It's like, okay, credits, you know, you can just look up each of these items, figure out where they drop from, go get those items, and then craft it. Now it does say, ma so this is mastery rank four required. So you have to be mastery rank four to get this, to craft this item. Um, so I'll get into some like good options as far as like loadouts for newer players. Um, but so that's, that's kind of how you can use the market to figure out how to farm a particular item. Um, don't buy weapons or frames with plat. It is, it is like, they're egregiously overpriced. Like it, there's just, there's no reason to buy warframes or weapons with plat unless you like really, 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 really hate a particular grind. Like if you really hate doing something, then maybe you could consider it. But if you're free to play, you're going to have to farm the plat anyways. So you might as well just do the, you know, do the content to get the frame or weapon or whatever. Um, okay. So as far as, so that, that kind of covers like the in-game market, Warframe market, don't use trade chat and use the wiki. Now, what can't you get as a free to play player? Uh, prime frames and weapons you can farm. However, prime accessories, so like, you know, the uh, prime sigil or prime operator accessories or uh, Cyandana's armor, that kind of stuff, these are either going to come from uh, prime access. So there's only, there's one prime access available at a time. So right now it's Protea. So if you looked at Protea prime accessories, uh, which, you know, I own, but, you know, if you're completely free to play, you might not want to. Um, it's going to come with these items, right? And you can't get these items besides buying this pack. So that's just kind of the way it is. Um, but they are all cosmetic. They don't affect gameplay. Um, anything that does affect gameplay, like the frame or the weapons, those you can farm. Um, the other thing you're not going to be able to get as a free-to-play player, at least on PC, is Tenogen. So, man, I really got to buy this Lavo skin. This thing is sick. Um, anyways, so Tenogen on PC costs money. So you cannot buy uh, Tenogen, you know, as a free-to-play player. Now, if you if you want to spend a couple dollars, like, go ahead. I'm not saying you can't, you know. But if you're like really want to just be completely free to play, you're not going to have Tenogen. Now, Tenogen is generally much more reasonably priced than the Prime Access stuff. And then the third thing is the Prime Resurgence, which is what I showed before. So this Regal Aya currency, this you purchase with real money. And frankly, I, I personally think it is a little overpriced, but you know somebody's got to pay the bills they do have development costs so you know some people are buying it which i don't remember what pack i got three regal aya from but um so all these weapons and stuff like the things you can actually play with are going to be available from relics anything that's a cosmetic prime that you're either going to have to get from the prime access pack which i already showed earlier or with regal aya when it comes back into the prime resurgence store so how Prime stuff works is when a Prime frame first comes out, that's like the Prime access, and then it'll go away for a while, and then it'll eventually come back into this Prime Resurgence store where you can get the relics and you can get the, um, you know, or you can just directly buy the items if you want to. So that's a really nice segue to um, Primes. So, you know, really quickly, I guess let's just talk about what's, what can you get as a free-to-play player? So, you know, we talked about what you can't get, but what can you farm? So, you know, everything you can't get is all cosmetic-related. And you can get a lot of cosmetics as a free-to-play player. Um, now, what can't, or what can you get? You can get Warframes. So you can farm every frame in the game as a free-to-play player. You can get weapons. So once again, every weapon in the game, you can 
farm as a free-to-play player. So primary, secondaries, melee. Um, there's also mods that you can get as a free-to-play player. So all of these mods you'll be able to get arcanes. And then the other thing is what I would classify as upgrade materials, which are really important. So that's Forma and then Orican Reactors and Orican Catalysts. So Orican Reactors double your mod capacity in your Warframes uh, and Companions, and Orican Catalysts double your mod capacity in your uh, weapons or your companion weapons. So those can be crafted. So let me just look, uh, I don't think I have a, no, I don't have blueprints. Do I have a formal blueprint? I don't. So basically any variant, so there's some other flavors of Forma. There's like the Exilus Warframe adapter. There's Exilus weapon adapter. There's like Umbra Forma, uh, Stance Forma. There's like some like, or Aura Forma. Um, I think, let me see if I have an Aura Forma. Nope, I don't have a blueprint. So any kind of flavor of forma can be crafted. Um, you'll just need a base forma plus some other materials to and the blueprint to craft that. So you know you can look it up on the wiki where those come from. Um, or and that this is the one nice thing about Warframe is basically anything in the game. If you don't want to farm it, you could just do something you like doing that you know can get you platinum and just farm the platinum to get that item. Um, okay, so of those things that you can farm that I just mentioned, um, the normal frames, so if you look at here, um, so one thing, you can get deluxe skins with uh, and deluxe bundles with platinum, so you can farm plat and then buy those, which is kind of cool. There are a lot of cosmetics you can buy with plat, so, um, which, is, which is nice. So, um, like I said before, like weapons, like Exceltra, you know, whatever, frames, weapons, uh, even companions, you can look up in the market and figure out how to get them. Um, so that's like the normal version of a particular item. Now there's also, a lot of items have prime versions. So if we go over to back over here, so prime parts come from void relics. So you're going to get void relics from like a, a variety of different missions, give relics as rewards. Um, if you go to the wiki and just look at the void relic page, there is a list of available relics. So now this says unvaulted. So what the heck is the vault? So if we look in game and we look at prime resurgence, so remember how I said when a prime comes out, it goes away for a while. Well, after some time, it'll get vaulted. So it'll basically, the relics that give that prime, like, item, whether it's a frame or a weapon or a companion, those those items, those relics will not drop anymore. If you have the relics already, you can use them, you can trade them with other players, like, whatever, but the relics won't drop anymore. Um, they will eventually come back, in prime resurgence so like ember prime just came back and she hadn't been in the game for a while so now what does that mean that means that the relics that ember prime comes from are back in the drop tables in missions that drop relics you can also use this currency called aya to directly buy uh so let me find one with ember 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 yeah okay so lith e1 this has ember prime blueprint and so they're in Prime Resurgence for a while. Like, this says retires in 77 days. So, like, you know, unless your luck is extraordinarily bad, you should be able to farm a Prime item when it comes to Prime Resurgence. Um, so one thing you can do... So, okay, perfect. All right, so this, this is Lith E1, right? So Relics... I personally play the game mostly solo, but relics are the one exception because it is just mathematically so much better to do relics in a group. So if you're doing uh, void fissures, which I'll get to in a second. So if you want a particular item from a relic, so let's say you want Lith E1, you want the Ember Prime Blueprint, the rare reward. So what you wanna do is go to the recruiting chat tab 
click on filters and just put lith e1. Okay, and now we'll see if anybody else is running lith e1. Okay, and so you see like here, this person is doing a lith p9. So this h means hosting. So if you want to do that relic, you would click on their name, talk to them, say, hey, please invite me to that. Now, obviously make sure you actually have the relic and be aware of what rad share means. Now, I'll get to that in one second. So if you want to do a particular relic, so let's say we want to do Lithy 1, so you would do looking for, and so if you do uh, brackets, you can link an item in chat. So Lith E1, um, rad share. Okay. So now what does rad share mean? So rad share refers to the quality of the um, relic. So if you go to relics, uh, so I'll just use this one as an example. So if, so you see how when I click on these, so these are the different qualities. So intact, exceptional, flawless, and radiant. See, as, as I go to higher uh, qualities of the relic, the so these are the chances, relative chances of getting that particular item. So as you increase the quality, it increases the chances of getting the rare reward, rarer re rewards. Um, now, one thing that's nice about, um, so let me just find one. Oh, okay, that's next. So remember how I said there's forma? So one, how you get forma, you can get blueprints for forma from relics. So now there's usually only two options that people go with for rarity or for quality of a relic. Um, and you can get void traces just by like basically doing any relic mission, you're gonna get void traces, which is nice. So you kind of just accumulate these over time. Your cap, so you see mine is 1750. Your cap is related to your mastery rank. So usually if a new prime comes out, there might be a component that is common. Or uh, So if it's a common component, people will do an intact share. So they will all use an intact version of that relic. If it is uncommon or rare, people will all use a, well, they'll do a rad share, which is using the, everyone upgrades it to radiant, and you, you know, you all use the same relic, so you basically have four times the chance of getting that particular, uh, or not four times the chance, but you get to sample that chance four times. So definitely want to do relics in a group. You can do it solo, but like it is definitely, you're gonna be at a disadvantage. Um, if you're trying to farm, like I, I would, that's probably m mostly going to work for like uh, either new frames. If, if you're farming a new pr frame that just came out, you're gonna get a ton of groups for those relics. If you're getting, trying to do a frame that's like in the vault or in prime resurgence, you're, that's probably more likely. Other frames that are, are just kind of like in the game, like I think like uh, Hildren is currently unvaulted. Like nobody's like target farming Hildren because her parts are just randomly dropping as you're doing void fissures. Now what the heck's a void fissure? So if you go in here, go to void fissures. Oh, let me turn steel path off actually. Sorry. So if you go to void fissures, so there's different qualities. There's Lith, Meso, Neo, Axie. Uh, ignore Requiem or Omni as a new f new player. Well, Omni are actually kind of nice. So Omni, uh, you can use any relic type. And actually, the Omnia fissures are really really nice. To be honest, they are they give a lot of really good rewards. Um, so you can either like target farm relics and like try to find specific prime parts, or you can just like like a great act. I mean, honestly, probably one of the best activities for new players to do is just run void fissures. Like you're gonna get void traces, which lets you upgrade the relics you really care about to radiant quality. Um, you're gonna just like, you know, if you do them in a group, you're you're gonna get really good parts, you know, just randomly dropping. Um, like I'll never forget when I was a really new player, I just happened to get Frost Prime because I was in a group and somebody who was vaulted at the time, somebody in one of my groups just had a, a frost prime relic and the, his rare part dropped and i was like well i might as well farm the other parts because they're not rare so you know you can just get really lucky sometimes 
Um, now this brings us to the question of where do you farm relics in the first place? So relics are dropped from a variety of different missions. I think in general, uh, if you're trying to do the lower quality relics, such as Lith and Meso, um, you're going to want to do Hepit. Where is it? Hepit. Oh my god. Oh, it's right here. So Hepit in the Void is really good for the lower tier relics. Ucko is really good for like Neo and Meso relics. Um, and then for Axie, so Lua is really good. Uh, where is it? Lua. Oh my god. Well, this is a little bit of a spoiler, I guess. So just kind of ignore that. Um, so yeah, so you'll eventually want to do the disruption mission on Lua, but you're going to have to get a little farther in the story to get to there at that point. Otherwise, bounties. So if you go to like Earth, um, if you go to Cetus, so we'll just head over here real quick. So if you do the bounties, you can also get acts, you can also get relics as rewards for bounties. So, um, and then the final thing you can get from relics, or a couple things actually. So one, you can sell your relics to a special vendor called Barrow Katir. Oh man, dude, my my computer did not like that. It's not like an OBS right now. Um, so you can go to Kanzu, do bounties, and if you look, you know, um, you know, okay, yeah. So here you can see, uh, so this gives like Kuva, Endo, Aya. You can use this to buy a, um, a relic. Um, okay, I completely lied. I guess the Cetus ones don't give relics, but some of the other open worlds do. Um, like Fortuna, I believe, does as a reward. So bounties are another way you can get a lot of like items like Aya or Endo or whatever. So... Um, all right, so the other thing you can get from... I don't know if Barrow is here right now. I don't think Barrow is here. Okay, so um, Barrow Katir is like this special merchant, and he uses this currency called Ducats, or Ducats, or I don't know how the hell you pronounce this. So if you go to like an item on Warframe.Market, it'll have a trading tax, the price that... So this is the platinum price that people are selling it for. And then there's also this ducats thing, right? So there's a special vendor who will basically, you can trade in your prime parts for this currency and trade that currency to this Barrow Katir guy. And he has things like primed mods. So that's where you get primed mods is from Barrow Katir. Um, so if you don't want to farm up the plant and you don't want to have to farm up the credits, you can wait until Barrow Katir has the primed mod that you want. Now that's going to take a while because he only comes like once a week or once every other week. Um, yeah, let me just barrow Katir. Yep, there he is. There's our boy. So, okay, so he's going to show up this weekend. Um, and like last time he had primed pressure point. So he has, he comes with like cosmetics. He comes with some weapons so like this veracrest was like a drop reward on twitch i think at one point he comes with some special mods that only he drops some of the mods that he comes with you can farm from other places but they're like way more annoying to farm from other places than from him he also has some relics um so as a new player barrow is like freaking awesome because like you know you're gonna get these prime mods you're gonna get you know, cosmetics, weapons, mods, it like, it feels awesome. When Barrow comes when you're a new player, holy shit, that's like Christmas. Um, it is, it is hype when Barrow shows up. So honestly, and this is what I did when I was a new player, relics are the shit. When you're, when you're free to play and you're a new player, like do, do the star chart, you know, do your quests. Those are the two big things. But if you want to just like hop into Warframe and just like do missions and like just kill stuff, do relics. Like relics are so, so, so lucrative. Um, and the other thing is, let's say you like get prime parts you don't need anymore. Well, you can just sell them, you know, make an account on Warframe.market, link it to your in-game username, 
and the parts that you don't need and you don't want to sell for ducats, um, you know, you can, so let me see, uh, this is probably, let me see, maybe is Volt, yeah, I think Volt's relatively expensive-ish right now. Okay, so like, let's say you happen to get like a Volt Prime part, and like, you know, you already have, let's say you already have Volt Prime, right, just assume that. Um, you probably don't want to trade this for ducats because you could get 40 plat for this piece. It's pro it's not really worth it to trade it for ducats. Um, you kind of want to you you kind of want to save like the crappy stuff. Like I th I'm pretty sure Hildren is like mad cheap right now. Yeah, the whole Hildren Prime set is 25 plat. So like um, you know like the Hildren Prime systems is going for one platinum. So it's probably worth trading this in for ducats. Um, and this also is a good point. Hildren is a great example of a lot of frames. It's easier to get the prime than it is to farm the frame, like the base frame. Uh, base frame, you have to get really deep into Fortuna. You have to level up multiple like reputations. You have to fight a pretty difficult boss. You know, it's not difficult for like veteran players but for new players it's the exploiter orbs pretty freaking hard um so farming normal hildren is actually a huge pain in the ass that you probably won't get to until you're like 100 plus hours into the game or you could farm 25 plat and just buy her now there is a very, very, very important... Oh, there's, they don't do links to the wikis anymore. So this is a great example. So let me just look. Um, Hildren Prime. Okay. Uh, Hildren Prime. Boom. Now, what is Hildren's... This is a mistake that I've seen a lot of people make. They farm the... Um, they farm the reputation, and they farm the... Uh, or not the reputation. They farm the plat to buy... A particular frame but ah, shoot i don't see i don't see a prime uh master your rank requirement on here anyways so uh in addition to weapons having a mastery rank requirement like remember earlier i said the hack you needed to be mastery rank four frames also have mastery rank requirements so you just want to be careful with that a lot of times the prime is easier to farm than the normal one but you want to make sure you're the right mastery rank to be able to actually do that Okay, so that kind of covers like how you get normal weapons, normal frames, primed stuff. Um, the other things that I mentioned were like um, arcanes. So, oh, sorry, before I forget. So I, I had mentioned like, so with the relics, that's how you get Forma. So Nightwave, which is kind of like the free battle pass type thing that Warframe has. Um, with Nightwave, you can get your Oricon stuff. So Oricon Catalyst and Oricon Reactor. Um, I've like I've been playing a lot of other games, so I've frankly barely played Warframe lately, and I could buy like multiple of each of these. Plus, you, you're gonna get these from like drops if you watch like, um, you know, like the weekly or like the Warframe streams that come on every once in a while. Those usually have drops. Sometimes it'll be like catalysts or formos or whatever. Um, the other thing is like don't farm Nitane extract. It's like this thing is the biggest pain in the ass to try and actually farm in game. Just buy it from the store. It's only 15 credits for five of these. It's dirt cheap in the Nightwave store. Just save yourself the heartache and just buy it from here. As a new player, it is also kind of nice because you can get like some of the alternate helmets. You can get a lot of different um, mods from Nightwave. Um, you can get uh, auras, which are really important. I believe you get an aura or two from just like doing the star chart from one of the... Um, uh, junction rewards but you know auras are a really important part of some builds so like it's really you know it's good to to grab them here um and then some weapons only show up in the nightwave shop um there's also these like weapon specific mods so once they rotate out of the current nightwave they will come back into the cred offering store and so like this says new offerings in three days so this store rotates so if you look in here and you know oh they don't have the you know brief respite or a mod that i keep seeing in builds like it's okay you know you can just wait 
check check the offering store when it refreshes and guess what if you want it really really badly guess what you can do you can just go look over here okay 15 plat you know all right so let me go do some relics let's say you know okay i'll do like hildren as an example like hildren prime uh i don't know chassis five plat right this is an uncommon part so like you know it's probably like the average price you're gonna sell a part for is like five plat so if you really want brief respite it's not in the it's not showing up in the night wave shore just go to like three relics you know and it's like sell those parts boom now you might get unlucky you might get only common stuff but if you're doing them in a group and there's four people odds are you're probably gonna get at least one option to get an uncommon piece um so yeah, so that's another, it's just a nice thing about Warframe. You can always just go buy pretty much whatever you want. There are some exceptions, there are some things you can't trade, but most things you can. Okay, so that kind of covers um, relics, uh, like kind of upgrade stuff. Um, mods are a little weird because like, you know, I talked about Prime mods a little bit. Those are from Barrow. Other mods come from a huge variety of sources. So, like, some mods come from specific missions, some come from bosses, some come from, like, these, you know, like, the reputations in Warframe, basically. So, like, so you're, oh, this is another thing. You're going to want to ally with a, uh, a syndicate. And so just playing the game, you'll get, like, reputation with this syndicate. Now, how they have things set up is you can basically have easily have three maxed out at one time so you, you see how there's like allied opposed and enemy so when you get reputation with parent sequence fit you'll get 50 percent of that as reputation for new loca but if you get reputation with parent sequence you'll get minus 100 percent of that for steel meridian so that's their enemy um now so basically what that means is you want to pick one it's going to be very easy to level up the ally of that faction. So for me, I picked New Loka first. Then that made it really easy to level up parent sequence. And then as you can see, you have your ally, you have your two um, enemies, and then there's two that are neutral. So I have I could have gone with either Cephalon Suda or <clears throat> uh, Red Veil. Vale. Um, Red Veil vale was the best choice because Cephalon Suda is also the enemy for New Loka. So you, you basically want to either pick the top row or the bottom row. That's kind of what it comes down to. You're going to level up the top row or the bottom row. Once you do that, you know, you can click on them. These also sell things like tons of mods, weapon parts, cosmetics. Um, another thing is relic packs. So you might wonder, like, man, how do, like, veteran players instantly have prime sets to to sell you know as soon as a prime access drops well as you can see like i'm saving up my points for uh Sevigoth prime so you can go in here view offerings relic pack just when a prime drops buy all the relic packs because it's basically like you know each relic pack has three relics so each relic pack is the equivalent of running three missions trying to get a relic so it's just like pretty good odds you're going to get a good amount of relics that um you know that have the uh the frame you want to get so um the other thing you can also get relic packs from uh teshin and the steel path store but i mean if you're a new player you're not going to worry about steel path for a while so i'm not even going to talk about that um so that's mods are kind of like um weapons like just honestly like if you see a mod and like a build or you see a mod you like just look it up just see where it drops if where it drops seems horrific and you're not there yet and you really want it just go buy it so like one example is like vital sense right um so this comes from like <clears throat> some um oh perfect so a lot of these have a uh, wiki link so, um, so yeah, so this comes from like, you know, a pretty good amount of missions. Like it used to drop from like, oh God, what is it called? Infested salvage. So one thing you'll see is like in trades, cause this is a very common mod, right? Every, you know, you're, it's very common to put crit damage on your rifle. 
So you'll see people in trade chat being like, oh, you know, want to sell Vital Sense for 100 Platinum, trying to, like, scam people. Don't do not do that. It's five on the market. You know, just just, just go here instead. Um, all right. Um, Arcanes are another thing where it's, like, pretty end game, I would say. Um, and some mods are fairly end game. Like, they come from, like, Steel Path or... Actually, I don't think there's any mods specific to Steel Path, but um, there's Galvanized mods, which come from uh, Arbitrations. Um, there's Arcanes, which can come from Steel Path. They can come from Bosses. They can come from... I mean, there's, like... I, I don't even have all the Arcanes. Like, there's some people that are real crazy and have every single Arcane. I don't. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot of Arcanes. Huge variety of sources. I will say I wish that they did a better job telling you where these came from. You're going to have to look that up, unfortunately. Now, one thing that's really nice. So let me just go here really quickly. Um, so it will take a little while to get to this point. But once you do, there is a an easier way to get Arcanes than previous. So, okay... Oh my gosh. Alright, so if you get to this point and you're talking to this guy, so there is this arcane uh, dissolution. So this is basically like you can just get arcanes. Like you basically trade in this Vosphor resource and you can buy a pack that gives you a bunch of random arcanes from this list, right? So that's a way like, you know... Eidolon Arcanes, these drop from the Eidolon bosses on the Plains of Eidolon. If you don't want to do those, but you want these Arcanes, you can dissolve the Arcanes you do have. That's how you get this Vosphor um, currency. Buy these packs and try to, you know, aren't, that's how you can, like, farm those Arcanes. So that's one thing. Um, so Arcanes and Mods, you're kind of going to have to look up on a case-by-case -case basis. Now... Um, what are some good items to, like, help, like, farm, um, especially for a new player? So this is probably going to be the one that, like, everybody suggests. I don't use this pet much anymore, but if you're new and you're farming stuff, it's, it's you know, pretty invaluable. It would be the Smita Kavat. So the Smita has, and this might get nerfed soon, just a warning. So um, it has this charm ability, which is... Basically, every 30-ish seconds, it has a chance to bestow its owner with good fortune. So one of the things you can get is a basically a buff that doubles your resource drops, which is, I mean, considering it's a game, which, you know, you're farming resources, that's pretty huge. You're also going to want to get Tech Enhance, which increases Kavat ability duration, which includes the mod or the buff that uh, they'll give you from Charm. I really like Tech Assault because that, that really helps with their survivability. Um, as far as weapons go, so we already talked about this one. The Heck is an amazing uh, low mastery rank weapon. I actually don't have the normal Heck anymore. I sold it, so I'll just put this Heck on. For secondaries, um, I think the Atomos is freaking amazing. This thing got me through basically the entire star chart. Uh, melee, if you do the Deadlock Protocol quest, you'll get the Zorus, which is a Glaive, which is extremely strong. Um, and then I actually really like, this is what I used when I was uh, a new player, because I actually started shortly before uh, Jupiter got added, which is when Wisp was added. And you can get the Fulman, which is Mastery Rank 8, but is extremely good. And it has a battery, so infinite ammo. It uh, has a shotgun mode, kind of like a shotgun mode, and a auto fire mode. Really, really, really good, you know, um, flexible weapon. I, I use the Fulman Prime all the time. I, I actually think, let me just double check really quick. I think the Fulman is still my most used primary. Yeah, it is. The Fulman is still my most used primary. So it's, it's just an amazing weapon. Um, as far as frames go, so you're going to want a frame, some frames for different, like, uh, activities. So, like, you're going to want a loot frame. What the heck's a loot frame? So some frames have um, 
augment mods, so like this one, rouses pilfering swarm. So Hydroid's fourth ability, Tentacle Swarm. If you use this mod, enemies held by tentacles have a chance to drop more stuff. So it basically makes your farming twice as good. So other frames, the other common frames for this are Korra and Necros. Um, I personally think Hydroid's probably the best at this point because, like, I think Core is probably better overall, but she's really hard to farm, and you have to like learn about pseudo exalted weapons and blah blah blah. It's just not worth it. So I think I would suggest Hydroid, um, and then you're gonna want a frame that's good at running capture missions. So if you're a new player, you can just pick Volt as your starting frame. You can also get him from the Clan Dojo uh, research lab. So in the Clan. There will be like a whole, and I'll show this, I can show this to you as well, but there's like, if you go to the research rooms in your dojo, there's all sorts of blueprints for frames and whatnot. Um, Volt is one of those. Another one is Wukong. He's also pretty fast. I think Zephyr is also from there. She's a great, uh, pretty quick early game frame. Um, Titania is really amazing. She's actually my favorite for running like capture missions and whatnot. Um, you're going to want a frame that's really good in the open world, such as Mesa. Um, Mesa is really fantastic. Um, or Zephyr. I, I actually used Zephyr a ton when I was a new player. I used mostly Zephyr for open world stuff. Um, so yeah, kind of get like a frame that's good at specific activities. Um, at least one. So, you know, I can go back to here really quick. So for, you know, um... So for the weapons, the Zorus, like I said, this is from the Deadlock Protocol. The Heck, you can just get from the market. The Atomos, I'm pretty sure you just get from the market. Um, <clears throat> and then for Warframes, Hydroid comes from the boss on Earth. Just do it in a public lobby and, you know, it shouldn't be too bad. Volt, you either pick it or it's from the Tenno Lab in the Dojo. Zephyr, Tenno Lab in the Dojo. Titania, you can do it from... Uh, the Silver Grove quest, and Wukong is from the Tenno Lab in the dojo. So very easy to get these frames and very effective for farming, which is what you know, you're know you going to be focused on a lot as a free-to-play player. Now the last two things, one is, so we talked a lot about Plat. The other two resources are Credits and Endo. Okay, so I have like around 100k Endo. As you can see, I have a lot of mods that are, you know, Okay, ignore those, but I have a lot of Prime mods, a lot of, you know, Rivens, a lot of Galvanized mods. All these are leveled up. I have never farmed for Endo in the entire 5,000 hours I've played Warframe. I have never farmed for Endo. Why? It's always the consolation prize. So if you do a mission, it's very common that you will get Endo if you don't get the thing you actually want. That is, it's a very common, like, consolation prize from missions. To the point where I really think that far target farming endo is really not worth it. You are going to get so much endo from just doing other stuff, like, you know, farming other things, that it's really not worth trying to get it specifically. Um, credits are one thing you will have to farm for. You They kind of just, like, come in, you know, as you play initially... Um, eventually you'll want to do the index on, uh, Neptune. I haven't done the index in a very long time. Um, you'll want to do the index, which is over here. You can look that up, um, see how to do that. So this is like a good way to get credits if you're a new player. Well, new-ish, you know, if you're at this point in the star chart, you're probably not that new. Um, and then the other thing is profit taker, which that is a way more like an end game thing but once you get to that point once you know what profit taker is and you can do it efficiently with chroma um and you you can look that up don't even think about that until you're you know relatively high mastery rank um that's the best way to farm credits you know at end game um bounties also give pretty good endo like the zaramon bounties a lot of the zaramon missions give really really good rewards um so I don't want to go into that too much because like that might be some spoiler kind of stuff. Uh, Railjack also gives really good rewards. Like if you just do like Void Storms, like these, if if you like relics and then you eventually get a Railjack, just do Void Storms. 
Like these things give so much endo. Like you get a ton of rewards from doing void storms, um, and that's how you farm Sevigoth. I know a lot of people don't don't like those missions. So um, okay, so that kind of covers like how to get normal stuff, how to get prime stuff, how to get arcanes, mods, how to use the market. Don't use trade chat. Don't use trade chat. Don't do it. Don't do it to yourself. Um, how to use the wiki. Uh, make sure you have a good loadout for whatever you're trying to do. Don't farm endo. It'll just come naturally. Um, you know, make sure you're paying attention to Barrow. Use night. Use the Nightwave store. Another thing you can do as a new player, like just use Nightwave to give you ideas of what to do. Um, like, you know, if it's like, oh, killer capture an Eidolon Hydralis. Well, how the, how the heck do you do that? Well, you can just right click on it. It kind of like tells you what you're doing. You're not going to be able to do this as a new player, most likely, but it at least like gives you some ideas. Um, same thing with Halls of Ascension. What the hell are Halls of Ascension? So that's like, okay, well, I'm going to gonna Google on the wiki, like what the hell Halls of Ascension is, and then try to do that. So, um, you know, you can, so yeah, do, do the star chart, do the quests, grind relics, use Nightwave to like get ideas of what to do. Like there is just so much stuff in Warframe. And that's one thing is like, if you're free to play and you're relying on grinding to get items rather than buying things, don't get too deterred if something won't drop, right? There's there's a billion things to do and whatever you do, you're gonna get some kind of evergreen resource such as credits, endo, you know, crafting materials. Like literally anything you do gives you stuff that you can use to make other stuff. And that's kind of how the whole game works. So don't get discouraged. Don't get scammed. Use the resources you have available. Um, and yeah, hopefully that gives you at least some, uh, some resources in how to free to play in Warframe. So like I said, one final pitch, don't use trade chat. All right. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.